it's fairly fast, quite luxurious, and actually pretty aggressive looking, making this one of the coolest crossovers that you can buy for 2025. Welcome back guys, or if you're new to my channel, this is Automotive Anonymous, and that's the 2025 Mazda CX-50 Turbo Premium. It's in the color that Mazda likes to call polymetal gray metallic, which in person, I actually really like this color. I think it looks really good, and on a clear sunny day like today, you can see a lot of metallic flake in the paint. It even has the fancy terracotta leather seats, which are heated ventilated. So basically today we need to find out if this top safety pick plus 2025 Mazda crossover SUV might be the right vehicle for you. So we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly to help you at home decide what do you do with this crossover. So you can expect to see a walk around. All the specs, initial driving impressions, 0 to 60 on GPS, and then my final thoughts and huge thanks to the Goody Motor Mazda group for letting me borrow this one for the day. I'll link them below if you're interested. They sell below MSRP, they ship all over the country, they're really fun to work with, and with that said, let's dive right into this review. And if you like Mazda, the Turbo CX-50, or my video, please be so kind to consider liking my video. That small act of kindness really does go a long way. It helps me know you wanna watch more stuff like this, it helps the video get shared, and it helps you by having YouTube choose to show you more stuff like this as well. Thank you guys. But if you're new to the CX-50, there's a couple things you really need to know. This actually came out as a brand new model just a few years ago for 2023. It only sold about 20,000 units the first year, about 40,000 units the second year, at least in the United States. It's a North American marketed vehicle, so it's sold in the US, Canada, and Mexico, but it's actually also sold in China. But if you are part of the North American market, they are assembled in Alabama, so they're basically homegrown. They're not made in Japan like the CX-50, but they're pretty cool, they're pretty unique. It is a top safety pick plus, and across the board, they're actually pretty affordable with a lot of the other Japanese crossover competitors. So Mazda is Japanese, just like Subaru, Nissan, Toyota, and Honda, which those companies are traditionally known for good reliability, good affordability, and offering some pretty long-lasting vehicles. So hopefully this follows suit. I mean, it does have the same powertrain as most other Mazdas, and it does have a lot of characteristics that draw people to it. But a base model starts at about $30,000, so pretty affordable, still being a top safety pick, having a lot of the standard safety features, but if you really want a loaded out trim level like this, or even the Turbo Premium Plus, which is just slightly more expensive than this, this one specifically is about $43,000 with options, with destination, it's a little bit over 44, and for that price point, you really do get a lot of stuff. And although a lot of the extra luxurious features aren't necessarily needed, they are kind of nice to have if you can splurge and if this is how you want to spend your money. So when you do spend over 40 grand for five turbo premium, you get a lot of extra standard features beyond the heated and ventilated seats, the heated steering wheel. You get blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, the wheel, the, uh, the steering wheel can even vibrate if you're going out of your lane. Basically, there are a whole lot of safety features built in. It also has some functional air on the front, a panoramic sunroof. You even have a power lift gate and quite a few other things that you're just going to see as we go through this video. But more importantly than anything else, a lot of us value the fact that the turbos do not have cylinder deactivation because that feature on engines doesn't seem to be the most reliable. So you're not going to have to worry about that on this one. But this specific example does have eye stop which is basically start-stop technology. So if you don't like that, just push the button. Also, a few Mazdas, a few modern ones, don't have all of those features because of supply chain issues. So if yours doesn't have that, that might be why, because there is a lot of inconsistency online for which features they have and which ones they don't. And if that eye stop and cylinder deactivation is still around or not, it seems like they are still around, but they're not on every model. But if you guys know more than that, please comment below. One of the joys to driving this is just how convenient it is around town. Again, technically it is a compact crossover, so it's only about 15 and a half feet long, but it has a nine foot wheelbase, so it's pretty planted on the road. And then a very aggressive stance because it's six and a quarter feet wide, but only five and a quarter feet tall. So it's a whole foot wider than is tall. So it's not very likely to roll over. It weighs up to about 3,900 pounds the way this one's configured with the turbo with the leather seats, with all those extra added electronics and safety features. And it has a payload capacity about 850 pounds, so that's pretty much on par or the low end for this class of vehicle. It can do a full circle in about 36 feet, and it has 8.6 inches of ground clearance with a really competent all-wheel drive system. 
and a fairly aggressive final drive ratio in the upper threes. And then the last couple things that we really need to mention out here is the gas door is thankfully located on the driver's side, but how these come from the factory, it doesn't lock when the vehicle locks, and this one being high trim level even has the folding mirrors. So you might have to go into the computer system, into the settings, and set that to lock on your own so the bums don't try to siphon any of your 15.9 gallons of gas. This being the turbo model without extra, you know, active fuel management systems, it only gets about 23 city, 29 on the highway, which is maybe just a little bit disappointing for the year 2025, but it can still go about 460 miles on a tank of gas. And then it has a 245, 45, 20 Goodyear tire. That's maybe a little bit more rim than I personally like, but I do understand that this is kind of becoming a sports SUV. And what do you expect? It does still drive really nice. And it has about 930 seconds of tread on it from the factory. And then this is your key. You have lock, you have unlock, you have power lift gate, you have panic button, and you probably have a remote start stop and door lock and unlock through the Mazda app. But with that said, let's hop inside and show you what else it has to offer. The driver's side door panel is actually really nice. A lot of different materials though, but thankfully they are all soft touch, even the door card with the baseball style stitching. Nice brown Terra, you know, armrest, handle, all the buttons. You can fold the mirrors in right here if your heart so desires, but I guess you can't do that when the door is open, only when the door is closed. And then you have a little bit of a pocket here, but it's not exceptionally large. Nothing really on the door still. The mats are not yet installed there in the back. You have rubberized pedals and dead pedal hood release, memory seats. You have a few of your extra controls and options here. A premium plus will probably have those buttons filled out. Ventilation, ventilation, lighting stock. And then this is your heated, ventilated, power-adjusted seat, which looks really nice. And then the panoramic moonroof with the sliding front portion up top. And then sitting inside here, again, it's really nice. It's a Mazda, and Mazda does develop good interiors for the most part. So let's fire it up with the push button start. I like that there are physical gauges. The needles don't dance or anything like that, but it does beep and come to life. The steering wheel is heated. It's leather wrapped. The heated button is right here next to the heated seat features. And there are a few things you can go through for info on the display, but not too much information. Mazda's keeping it pretty timeless. There are paddle shifters on the back of the horn. Pretty high pitched, but fairly loud. This is your 10 inch display. When you go to home, you can go through a few different things. I actually really like this display and that's basically what I had on my old Miata, which I actually like it more than a lot of other infotainment systems. Also with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, it's really good. Physical controls, again, hazards. You have the heated seat features. You have some plugins right there. You have a storage tray. You don't have great size cup holders without interfering with the dashboard. You have the backup camera. Trajectory lines do not move, but the clarity is actually pretty decent. You have your drive modes. You basically just have sport if you go up or off-road if you go down. And then you have electronic parking brake, auto vehicle hold. You have your control for the volume, and if you hold that, you can turn off the screen if you so desire. You can set something up with star. I don't necessarily like the French door style opening. It's just inconvenient and then it lifts up so high it's hard to reach around it. So if you have limited range of motion, that might not be your favorite. But you have decent size storage. You can put a navigation card in there. You have a few plugins. But again, it's kind of a weird design for me. You have garage door openers. You have LED lights right here. You have the sun shade, which is electronic and you can slide or lift the top and then you have a sunglass holder. Otherwise, I'm kind of disappointed that this only has an extension. It doesn't actually slide off of it. You do have a light, so when you open this up, the LED light turns on. And with that said, let's hop in the back and sit behind herself. The back of the CX-50 has very similar style door panels to the front. They're just a little bit smaller, especially at the bottom, and no Bose advertisement back here. But it is a very nice leather seat, 60-40 split. Mazda seats are sometimes kind of heavy. This one actually looks like we have a seat belt stuck to it. So they are a little bit heavier than something like Subaru seats. You can see behind myself, they hardly can fold down, but when they do go down, they basically go down flat. And I don't necessarily see a recline point. So if I'm missing that, please comment that below. But sitting behind myself at five foot 11, yeah, this is where the compact crossover comes in. I only have a little bit of room in front of my knees. Thankfully, I actually have the vehicle on right now, so the ventilation is good. Heated seats, just like the front, they work pretty well. You have a few plugins. The wide armrest actually has enough room for you and your passenger, which is pretty cool, and some cup holders. But because of the hump right here from the drive shaft, the middle seat passenger, if they're a full-size adult, probably won't have a very good time. 
and a five foot 11 i do have a little bit of room above my head and a very nice view from the back seat so with that said let's hop out and i'll show you the hatch the back of the cx50 does not stand out nearly as much as the front and i said this in my most recent cx50 review that was a non-turbo one kind of looks like a frowny face you have the nose you have a stern frown you have the eyes and you have the side brows and compared to the black premium I reviewed, I think it's a little bit more noticeable on this one. But what do you guys think? Comment below. I also like that you do have dual exhaust on the turbo. But back here, there's a few ways to open the hatch. You can either push the button that's on the dashboard, climb through the back seats, break the window, which is not what I advise, push the button underneath the Mazda emblem, or just use the remote. Because if you're paying $44,000 for this, you might as well use the features that it comes with. Back here you have 31 cubic feet as is, which is actually pretty nice, a really wide opening. The bumper doesn't actually stick out too far, so it's pretty easy to load stuff in here if you guys can see that. And then when you do drop the seats, say you want to use one of the handles, you actually have about 56 cubic feet. And so from back here they lay almost flat. There's some bag clips, LED lighting, you could have a privacy shade added on. And then you do have a temporary spare under here with the Bose speaker. And a little bit of extra storage, especially behind the wheel wells on each side otherwise you can lock and lower or you can just lower it and you can set the hatch height if you have something sticking out while you're driving down the road and if you do get a ride shotgun in this one you do have proximity key features to lock and unlock but they're not like a button like on some mazdas it's just hidden within the handle and then this is your door panel basically is going to look the exact same as the front minus a few of the extra controls like the window adjustments and folding them in but you still have the bose advertised speaker nothing again on the door sill this one actually does have power seats for the passenger unlike the lower trim levels backpacks having a good time a very nice place to be but there's no transmission tunnel storage or above the glove box and those are features i would have really liked also the glove box is non-locking and it's a two tray level design it's probably adequately sized for a compact crossover vehicle class but with that said let's come around to the front i'll pop the hood and i'll show you what the turbo two and a half liter sky active g engine looks like under the hood is a two and a half liter turbo engine you can see induction on this side the turbo and the exhaust manifold is in the back and ultimately if you put 87 octane in this thing you're going to get about 227 horsepower about 310 pound feet of torque but if you do put some premium dyno juice in it, you're going to get up to about 256 horsepower, so a 29 horsepower jump, and about 320 foot-pound-feet of the twisty stuff. So this one comes from the factory, probably just with mid-grade 87, so you'll notice that on the 0-60 to 60 we do. But just know, it will be a little bit faster if you're in, you know, more ideal driving conditions, and if you have better fuel in it. Otherwise, you have the computer, you have your reservoirs throughout, you have the battery, you have a fuse box, and there's actually enough room on this to work on it for most aspects, but it is transversely mounted, so the front of the engine is on the passenger side. You have the engine mount right there, the serpentine belt, the alternator, so some maintenance items might be kind of tough on this bigger engine. Some things are going to be a little bit easier the way it's configured, and overall, I think we're ready to drop the hood and take it for a drive and see how fun it is on the road. Initial driving impressions of the 2025 Mazda CX-50 Turbo Premium. First of all, let's get in some boost pressure. Definitely pulls a lot better than the regular 2.5 liter uh, non-turbo CX-50 that I drove a week or two ago. But overall, it does drive very similar to that one. This one does have bigger wheels, 18 inch wheels instead of 17s or 18s depending on the spec you go with. and. You know, visibility is basically the same across all of these, which is pretty decent. No rear view camera on this one, but it does have a lot of creature comforts with the heated, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel. You're just gonna have a really good time and at about $43,000, most other vehicles aren't gonna give you as smooth as a driving experience. The Bose speakers do sound really good, but I can't show you those on camera. Plus the speaker quality is gonna be distorted between my recording and your uh, feedback or playback. The seats don't have crazy bolstering, but what do you expect in an SUV that is sporty focused, but not an all out sports SUV? Turning, let's see how this does. At a little over 20 miles an hour. Yeah, you get held in pretty well. The turbo gets you right up to speed. The steering in this is pretty sharp, so even though it doesn't turn actually faster or more sharply than other crossovers, it is tuned to feel better, just how the weight of the vehicle gets loaded on the shocks. It just feels really sporty, and it's kind of misleading how good these feel. Overall, it's a very nice, comfortable place to be. I do wish the cup holders were better, bigger, could fit our huge American drinks, but for a reasonable vehicle, 
you know, a compact crossover of all things. I think this is a really cool vehicle and for about 43 grand, you're getting quite a lot. But I always recommend you test drive the competition, make sure that this is in fact the right vehicle for you because it does have a lot of competition in the market. There's a little bit of a bump up here. Let's see how it does going almost 50 miles an hour. Yep, you can feel that a little bit more on these 20 inch wheels with less sidewall than I could when I took the regular CX-50 out here. But still, I'm having a pretty good time. It just feels fun to drive a modern Mazda with how well these are engineered and how much they are focused around the driver. And with that said, let's get to the private road, do a zero to 60, and then we'll wrap this video up. Zero to 60 in the turbo CX-50. Keep in mind density altitude's 4,400 feet. So even though this one's turboed, it's still down on power, probably seven or 8%. Traction's off, sport mode is on. Let's do a little bit of a brake drive and see what it can do. Pretty linear power. Zero to 60 came in at 7.14 seconds. True time, a little bit faster with our rollout. That's not too bad given our elements. My final thoughts of the 2025 CX-50 Turbo is well, now that I've driven a few of these, I actually do like them more and more every single time. I like the wide body look. I like the design, the handling, the personality of it, because this is a vehicle that actually has personality. And at about $44,000 before your hefty discount from Goody Motor Mazda, I think you guys are probably gonna like it too. It handles the road well. It looks good. It has enough capability for most people. I mean, most of you guys are not gonna take this off road. You're gonna treasure this thing. You're gonna drive it on paved roads. And although it can go off road, I think this is where it belongs. So don't take my word for it. Go drive one for yourself. Drive the competition. Remember, there's about four other big Japanese brands, so test drive them all. Test out the Americans, any of the German cars you want. Basically, make the right decision for you. I'm just a random guy on YouTube giving you my quick impressions for today. And with that said, if you guys got anything out of this video, please consider liking this video. Comment your thoughts and opinions below. Subscribe if you haven't already. There will be a driving only video of this coming pretty soon, and then probably a comparison to a Touring XT Outback. Anyways, guys, stay tuned. Subscribe if you want to watch those. Otherwise, I wish you the best. I hope you take care, and until next time, see ya.